Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Nicole with Made From Scrap and today I'm gonna do the walkthrough and tutorial for my Country Craft Creations Design Team project. This is a beautiful collection from Graphic 45 called The Beach Is Calling. And I had the paper collection itself, 12 by 12 size, the 12 by 12 patterns and solids to use. I had the ephemera pack, rub-ons, and the chipboard titles and tags. It is fantastic. I also used the artisan cardstock. Uh, this is the summer ivory, as well as some craft artisan cardstock that I used inside the album. So this is an eight by eight album, and it is has a two inch spine. It has three signatures inside of it, so there is plenty of room for photos and these awesome decorations. I used the what I call the signature sheet of the collection, the main page, the focus that has the biggest elements onto it uh, that was uh, all put together. I went ahead and cut out that main image and then I used the other pieces sporadically through the project. I wanted to highlight this beautiful, beautiful image. So I distressed the edges of it. I layered it with a bunch of ephemera underneath. So you have this piece of ephemera under here that is the banner piece. You have uh, all of these pieces on the side that are the seashells and the leaves and the scroll elements, sand castle and the title and the bird up here that's on some pop dots. And then you also have tucked in another piece that I cut out from that main signature page, this little stamp. And then underneath all of that is one of the title uh, chipboard titles and frames. So this is one of the frames. So that is tucked underneath as well. Now inside of the album, I have a couple of the chipboard pieces in there as well. So let's get started and show you. Um, I have on the inside front cover, I have this magnetic piece underneath this chipboard frame here. And then I use some of the ephemera pieces down here for from the collection just to decorate this piece, which is going to hold the waterfall in place. So we have these waterfall on the front inside cover that uses the four by six uh, cut aparts in the collection. And then you have a lovely piece here to do some journaling on. It's a paper piecing. And then all of the photos that can go on the back side of this waterfall. So that magnet will hold that shut. But this is also a belly band. This right here this waterfall so I have a large pull out mat behind there and the mats measure seven and a half inches by seven and a half inches I have one in the front and then one in the back uh, cover as well so here we did some paper piecing and I just have some of the uh, artisan cardstock and the beautiful paper and I just tuck that in there I used a tag um, a tab punch that I have to um, go ahead and have a piece that I can pull on to get this out. Puppy. And then on the back side here, I did some additional paper piecing and then one of the large ephemera pieces. Here's one of the cut aparts from the collection. I put that on some cardstock and then a couple of the seashells. Isn't that beautiful? So let's get started with the pages themselves. Um, like I said, I did, I did make three signatures here and they're graduating pages. So hopefully it looks to you like it looks to me like they're crashing waves onto the seashore. Uh, the smallest signature is in the front. So each one of these has an actual pocket page in it and I'll show you that, but it gets larger as it goes towards the back. And I want to also let you know that on this front signature, these small pages, it is intentional to have something fall off of the page here in width. And the reason for that, which is why I layered up all of these, besides it looks pretty, but all of these ephemera pieces is so that as you're flipping the pages, it doesn't get caught on this band here that holds down the 
waterfall, okay, since it's long enough to extend onto that. As you flip the pages, it's going to start to move over and you don't want it to get caught. If you only had the flap itself, it's going to end up getting caught on there. So anyhow, so here are the front pages. You can see we have three flaps here on the front and they get larger as we go. And then you have the actual pocket page itself with this pullout. And that pullout measures four and a half inches by about five and a half inches. I just stressed all the tops. They have nothing on the back. I kept those open for photographs. And let's turn the page. So we have on the back side of each one of these pocket pages, we have another pocket. And then we have a booklet. So this is the smallest of the booklets. And you open it up, plenty of space for journaling and photos. And then I have uh, one of the pieces from the collection that I fussy cut out, distressed the edge, and left open as a tuck area. So moving on, I have the second or the middle uh, signature here. So this is the first flap, second flap, and then the last flap here is larger and it has a title across the bottom and then another piece of ephemera here which is the ore and then I wrap some twine this is available this twine at countrycraftcreations.com as well with some of the chipboard little mi minor mini I'm trying to say tags on them I hot glued this one down the circular one down but I left this as you know to move around I thought it was quite cute so let's turn the page here. Then we have this frame on, this, on top of one of the tags. These are both chipboard elements here. And to keep them uh, flatter so that this ended up not being so bulky, I went ahead and started from here separating off the back of each of the chipboard pieces so that I could layer them so this is thinner. I also left it open from gluing on the side here so that if I needed to tuck a, uh, a photo in I could do just that. And then I did some paper piecing here on this side. Okay this is the middle um, pull out. This is five and a half inches in width and uh, six and five eighths inches in height. Okay, again, nothing on the back side of that one. Flip that over, and then here is the next booklet. Uh, I have on this pocket another piece that is from the collection pages that I cut down. And then you have this tag from the chipboard pieces where I just left open so we could put a piece of beautiful paper, some artisan craft cardstock in the middle, and then you have some layered ephemera pieces there. Okay, and then moving on, we have this chipboard piece here, one of the frames. I used some of the rub on underneath, and then I put the frame on top, but I only glued the bottom and the left-hand side of the frame so that that is open and you can still put a photo behind. Okay, so that's that front flap. Here's one of the rub on pieces. I would just tell you that the rub-ons on the Artisan cardstock is going to be a little bit more difficult to get it smooth. Uh, if you want it to have the distressed look, it'll be beautiful. And this kind of went with the distressed look anyhow. So you have to work the areas that you want to be solid a bit more. Uh, but other than that, it is fantastic to work with these rub-ons. I really like the look of that. Um, I just think it's fantastic. So here's one of the ephemera pieces. I use that again for these cut aparts just as a tuck spot. And that's the next flip. Same thing here. Another piece of, of ephemera that you could use as a tuck spot with this collection. Isn't this beautiful? And then this is the, the last flap. And then on the pocket page itself, right here, I layered up some of the papers and just glued it on both sides so that it could be a belly band there. And then I have some of the beautiful paper collection and the cut apart and another mat that I made here that we can tuck a photo in there as well. 
so those just tuck in just like so and then this is the large pull out from the pocket page and this one measures six and a half inches in the width and about seven and five eighths inches tall and this was the reason why in the tutorial which we're going to get to in just a second i said make sure that you put your your pages your signatures towards the very bottom of your spine when you're putting in the binding that way you have more space at the top in your book for these tags okay on the back side of this last pocket page we have this pocket where I used another rub on so you can end up seeing on the pattern paper as it's uh, solid and not textured you really have that rub on that goes on solidly there solidly there is that a word I don't know anyhow this is the last final booklet and it is the largest of them so plenty of space again for all of your journaling and additional photos this was left open strategically just gluing the ends and then the ephemera pieces here at the bottom so some of those seashells okay so that's the last one there and then on the inside cover we have the last large insert with another piece of ephemera here and then I layered up some of the craft cardstock with some of this beautiful pattern uh, paper this white page and on the back side some paper piecing there so again you can do some journaling or additional photos okay and that is it for the walkthrough so let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial but check out country craft creations for all the beautiful collections of paper including this one the beach is calling and all of the odds and ends that come with it ephemera rub-ons uh, chipboard elements and so on as well as your artisan cardstock you can get from there okay I will put a link below to the all of the items I used in this project and I hope to see you back here soon but if you're going to stick around for the tutorial let's get started Hello everybody and welcome to the tutorial for my project using Graphic 45, The Beach is Calling. So we're going to make a mini album and this measures 8 by 8 inches and the spine measures 2 by 8 inches. So I used the lay flat binding method and I have a link to that um, tutorial in the notes below. Um, so moving forward with that, uh, I guess I'll let you know that I used the Artisan cardstock. This is the Summer Ivory, and um, it does look a little yellow on the website, but it is not. It is really well paired with this uh, collection for paper. So that's what I'm using for my construction. Okay, so I have done that, and I'm going to set that aside. The next thing we're going to move forward with is the actual... Um, this is the hinge mechanism so this measures four inches wide by seven and a quarter inches long and we're going to put that with the four inches at the top of our scoreboard and then we're going to score that get a little bit closer here at half an inch one inch one and a half inches two inches two and a half inches three inches and three and a half inches that's just a half inch, every single half inch all the way across, okay? Then we're going to rotate this 90 degrees so that your four, seven and a quarter is up at the top. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna first go ahead and score down from the six and one quarter inch mark all the way down until you get to the top of the last three half inch scores. So you want to just go through one, two, three, four, five half inches, and you should have three half inch um, portions without a, a cross score, okay? And then we're going to go to five and a quarter inches, and you're going to score down just the first two half inches. So down one inch, okay? And what that looks like, I'll show you the pencil here, just like that, okay? Then what we're going to do is we're going to cut, we're going to cut this out. 
we're going to cut this out, and then we're going to cut all of this out. Okay, so we're going to end up with two, two of our half inches that are shorter, they're five and a quarter inches, and then we're going to end up with the next three that measure six and a quarter inches, so we're going to cut those out, and then we have three remaining that are seven and a quarter inches, just like that. So this is what we ended up cutting out, just like this, okay, hopefully that makes sense. And the reason that we're doing that is for this paper, we're going to end up with um, our pages that are graduating in size. So let me go ahead and put this scoreboard here, and I'm going to go ahead and burnish all of the score lines. So we will fold each one of these and burnish them back. Okay, we're making our hinge. The front signature is going to end up being uh, the shortest, and that's going to be, like I said, the shortest. Okay, I'm going to work each and every one of these score marks, just like so. So now I have worked them in both directions, okay? So now what I'm going to do is the first two, the shortest, are going to be on the left, and we're going to end up putting two of those together. Then you'll have a flat section. That's our gusset. Okay, and then you'll have the next two. Actually, those get glued together. And then you'll have a second gusset. And then you'll have the last two that actually get glued together. So we're going to go ahead and glue those. And this is the way that it'll end up looking, just like that. So let me go ahead and put glue inside. If you want to, you can use your double-sided score tape. I just prefer using the glue most times. So I'm going to leave that one gusset, and then I'll have the next two sections that are glued together and burnish that down. Okay, and then the last two sections will get glue on them, and I will burnish that down just like so. Okay. Make sure to burnish this really well. And with that, you'll see that we have the three hinges and we have two gussets. And that is what we're gonna end up gluing inside of our album, but not yet because I wanna go ahead and put the decorative paper down first and then I will align this on the bottom. Okay, uh, and when I put this uh, in, I'm going to align it with the bottom here, pretty close to the edge, uh, about an eighth of an inch up. That's because I want to make sure that I have space at the top of my page for a pocket page. Okay, so let me go ahead and, and cut my decorative paper. I'll put that down, and then we'll be right back with uh, the construction of the pages. Okay, now let's get started with the cardstock, the signature pages. We're going to go ahead and start with a piece that is um, seven and a quarter by seven and a half. And the first measurement that you're going to see is the width of the page. And then the second measurement is going to be the height of the page. Okay, uh, that first page we do not do anything, any scoring with. So we're just going to turn it over. I like to turn my pages over to the side uh, until I'm all done. Okay, the next page that we're going to um, put in our scoreboard is going to be seven and three quarters by seven and a half inches. And at the seven and three quarter inch side, we are going to score at seven and a quarter or Either way, you can put that in at seven and three quarters inches at the top and score at half of an inch, okay? That's only on one side. Then you'll burnish that and you'll set that down to the side next. Then we're gonna move to what's going to be the middle pocket page and this measures six and a quarter inches wide by six and a half inches. Same thing, we're gonna set that aside because we're not gonna do any burnishing to that uh, or scoring. Next thing we're going to have is the six and three quarter inches by six and a half inches. And we're going to put that in our scoreboard with the six and three quarter inches at the top 
and score at half of an inch. Okay, burnish that and put that to the side. Next, we're going to have the front pocket page, and this measures five and a quarter inches by five and a half inches tall. Set that to the side. We're not going to do anything with that. Uh, we are creating our pocket pages. So uh, we're going to move on to the very next page, which is going to be five and three quarter inches in width and five and a half inches tall. And with the five and three quarter inches at the top, we're going to score at half an inch and burnish that and set that aside. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do are the flaps for each of those. So those we're going to create our pocket pages, and I'll show you how to put those together after we finish scoring uh, all the rest of the sheets. So we're going to be back to the back page. This is the large flap, and this measures 7 and 3 quarter inches by 6 and a quarter inches tall. With the 7 and 3 quarter inches at the top, we're going to go ahead and score it at half of an inch. Burnish that and put that to the side. We're still working on the back signature, and this is going to be the medium flap, and this measures six and three quarter inches by six inches tall, and we're going to score that with the six and three quarter inches at half of an inch. Okay. Lastly, after we burnish that, we're going to have one last page for the back. The, um, one last flap for the back page. This is the small flap and it measures five and a half inches. That's at the top of the scoreboard and it measures five and a half inches in height. And we're going to go ahead and score that at half of an inch. Okay, so it didn't matter which direction you put that in because it was the same dimension. All right, next we are moving on to our middle signature. And so this is going to be the large flap for our middle signature. And this measures six and three quarter inches in width. That's at the top of our scoreboard. We have a five and a half inch uh, page height, and we're gonna go ahead and score at half of an inch. So you can see that this is a lot of easy scoring. The next two page flaps, we're gonna do the same thing and score it at half of an inch. So we have a measurement of five and three quarters at the top, five and uh, five and a quarter inches in height, and we're going to go ahead and score that at half of an inch. Burnish that, put that aside. Now the small flap for our middle signature. This measures four and three quarter inches um, in width and four and three quarter inches in height, so it doesn't matter which way you put that in, but just go ahead and do one score at half of an inch and burnish that. Lastly, we're going to move on to our uh, front signature flaps. So this is our large flap and it measures five and three quarter inches in width and we're gonna go ahead and score that at half of an inch. The height of this page measures four and a quarter. Burnish that one, put it to the side. Our middle flap for our front signature measures four and three quarter inches by four inches and with the four and three quarter inches at the top, we're gonna to score it at half of an inch. Lastly, we're going to have the small flap, and this measures three and three quarter inches in width and three and a half inches in height, and we're going to go ahead and score that at half of an inch. Okay. Next, we're going back to the back signature, and this is the back pocket. So on the back side of the signature, we're going to have a pocket of each one of those signatures. Uh, this one measures eight and a quarter inches in width by two and seven eight inches tall and we're going to go ahead and score that at half of an inch. Rotate it, score it at half of an inch, rotate it again so that you score it at a half of an inch. That way you have a pocket that's formed by the three score marks just like that. Okay, set that aside. The next page that you cut is going to be the insert, so we have no scoring that we're going to be doing on this, but this measures six and a half inches in width and seven and three quarter inches in height, so set that aside. The next pocket is for our middle signature, and it measures seven and a quarter inches uh, in width, so we have that at the top of our scoreboard, and we're going to go ahead and score it at half of an inch, rotate it one time score it at half of an inch again, and then rotate it one more time, again at half of an inch. So again, we get a long, a wide pocket. Okay, 
set that aside. The insert for that pocket is going to measure five and a half inches wide by six and three quarter inches in height. No scoring for that, so just set that aside. Okay, and then we have our front signature backside pocket. This measures six and a quarter inches in width and again two and seven eighths inches tall. So put that um, measurement of six and a quarter at the top of your scoreboard and let's go ahead and do the same thing. Score it at half an inch, rotate it a quarter turn, score it at half an inch, rotate it another quarter turn, and score it again at a half of an inch. So again, we have a wide pocket. The insert for that pocket is gonna measure four and a half inches by five and three quarter inches. No scoring for that, just set it aside. Okay, then we're gonna move along to the booklets that we have. We have a booklet for each of those pockets. Uh, so we're gonna have our first one at 12 inches in width, and then the height of it measures seven and a half inches, and we're just gonna score that right down the middle. So we're gonna score it at six inches, and set that aside. Then we have our middle section. This one is also 12 inches wide, six and a half inches in height. Score it right down the middle at six inches again. And then lastly, we're gonna have for our uh, front signature, this measures 12 inches in width and five and a half inches in height. Score it at six inches. Okay, those are our booklets. Moving along for our inside front cover, we're gonna be doing a waterfall. So you should have five pieces that measure six and a quarter inches by four and three quarter inches. We're gonna turn that and rotate it so that the four and three quarter inches is at the top of our scoreboard and we're gonna score it at half of an inch. And you'll do that all five times. This is going to be a, a waterfall for a four by six um, card and it's a horizontal card so you should have five of those and then we're going to have our piece that is our belly band and that measures six and a quarter inches wide by eight and seven eighths inch in height we're going to rotate that to have the eight and seven eighth inches at the top of our scoreboard and we're going to score it at half of an inch we're going to rotate it all the way around so that we still have the eight and seven eighths inches at the top and we're gonna score it again at half of an inch. This gives us a clean half inch at each side and we're gonna set that aside. Okay, next you should have two inserts for layouts. These each measure, they both measure seven and a half inches by seven and a half inches square and that has no scoring at all. Okay. We're down to our last couple pieces. The next one is uh, the magnetic flap for our waterfall. And this measures two inches in width by seven and a quarter inches in height. And we're gonna put that in our scoreboard with the seven and a quarter inches at the top and score it at half of an inch. Let's set that aside. Okay, lastly, we're gonna have our back inside cover pocket. So that is a piece that measures eight and seven eighths inches in width and it measures four inches in height and we're going to score that on three sides at half of an inch so score it rotate it a quarter turn score it at half an inch again quarter turn half an inch so just like that we set that aside and that is all of our scoring okay now we're going to get into the construction so i'm going to go ahead and set aside my uh, scoreboard, my score pal there, and I'm going to take my stack that I had placed and go ahead and flip it over so that I'm starting with the beginning of my page construction. Okay, so you should have your first two sheets, you should have your large uh, signature page, and we should have this half inch flap. Let me try to let me get this a little closer so you can see a little better. So you're gonna have this half inch flap, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and place our adhesive on the outside of that flap. Oops, and don't get any glue on the inside. But we're gonna go ahead and place this on top of that flap on that adhesive. Make sure to line up your page on the corners, and then 
use your burnishing tool to burnish that. You should end up with a page like this. Okay. What this is going to be is this is going to end up being our pocket page. And what we're going to do is place this on our, each of these pocket pages are going to end up going onto our hinge. We'll end up gluing this down like so. And then we'll place glue along the bottom and then along this, the side here. And then we'll close that up just like Tammy does her albums uh, for her pocket pages. So this will become a pocket. Okay, but let's go ahead and finish doing all of the gluing and burnishing first. So that's our back signature. I'm going to start setting our back signature in one pile and then our uh, middle signature in another pile and then finally our front signature in the last pile. Now these are all going to get constructed the same way. We're going to make sure that our half inch flap is folded inward and then we're going to go ahead and place our other page right on top of that and that's going to create that little booklet there okay this is our middle one now moving on we're going to have our front signature this is the smallest one the idea here is that the signatures um, graduate in size Ooh, let me make sure I put it the right way Nicole okay, gotta pay attention going on. Nope. That was right. That was right. I just need to do a little bit of surgery because that is off. A little crooked. One page to the other. So no big deal. We just trim it off just like that. What I'm trying to do is make sure that both of my pages are the same in height and in width for this booklet. Okay, so that's going to be our front. Let me move these down. That's going to be our front signature. So we have our back signature here, we have our middle signature here, and we have our front signature here. And they're going to open like this. Okay, the the hinge is on the right hand side. Next we're going to start with the page flaps and so each of these are going, they are coupled in threes, so we're going to end up gluing these on together like so, along the left hand side. And once we glue these together you can see how it graduates both in width and in height. And this is going to end up going on here on the page and you can choose whether or not you want to have everything be flush on the right hand side so that would mean that you would glue it all the way into the edge I am NOT going to do that so I will have to put my decorative paper on first and we can do that together but I'm going to inset my um, my flaps by having <clears throat> I'm going to use my spacer okay and I'm going to space this by an inch. Okay, so this is going to end up overhanging. Oops. My graduating pages flaps are going to end up sitting about a half of an inch in from the edge so if you have the little small spacers you can use that for this um, but I'm intentionally have them hang off of the page okay so let me go ahead and just glue these flaps together first the flaps can go ahead and and all be glued one on top of the other match the bottom and I'm matching the left hand side so that they stack up nicely and I will glue the next one, the middle flap. Again, matching the bottom and the left hand side for placement and burnishing that. Okay. So just like that, I have all three flaps together. And again, I'm not going to glue this yet because I want to put my decorative paper down first. And then after I do that, I'll end up putting this just like so, okay? 
All right, let's do the other flaps first. So we're going to grab the next three that we had in our stack, and we're going to go ahead and glue those together. So fold over your flap, place glue on the back side of that flap, and then the smallest one is going to be lined up on top of the middle flap. And remember, your half inch flaps are tucked behind, okay? So I'm aligning with the fold, each time with the fold and with the bottom. So I folded this underneath, this middle one. I'm gonna go ahead and glue, place glue on it. And then this large flap is gonna have this half inch tucked behind so that I can align the folded edges to, on the left hand side. And then the bottom as well. Have this one ready. Now I'm going to go to the, the next three, pick those up from my stack, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. They're already folded behind the half inch hinges, so I'm going to place glue on those. I'm going to line up those folded edges on the left, line up the bottom. Do it again with the middle section, or the middle flap that is line up those folded edges just like that and that is for our small signature okay next you should have the back signature pocket so we have those three score lines we're going to go ahead and cut out those squares just like that we're going to go ahead and burnish those sides back and then the bottom up. I'm going to burnish that. And this is going to go onto the back side of our signature. So make sure when you flip this over that your signature opens on the right hand side, or else you're not going to be on the bottom. <laughs> um, so make sure your signature opens on the right hand side, just like that. Your hinge is on the left. And then we're going to align this pocket right at the bottom of that signature. So I'm going to place glue on all of the half inch flaps. Okay. And I'm going to glue that right to the bottom, aligning both the sides before I burnish that down. Okay. So we flip it back over. And we're going to have our three flaps that we have not attached yet. And then we're going to have our what will be our pocket page, which is really just a booklet right now. And then you can see the bottom has a pocket on the back side of that. So I'm just going to set that down to the side. Uh, we do have an insert. Remember, that's going to end up going in the pocket on the back side of that signature. So set that down. And then we're going to redo this twice more, once for the middle signature, so we're cutting out those squares from the pocket that will be on the back side of the signature, folding under the side score lines, and then the bottom of the pocket, and then burnishing. We'll turn our signature over, just like so. Make sure that the signature is going to open on the right hand side for right now, so that way we know that we're getting our pocket on. Uh, the correct side of our signature. And how many times am I saying the word signature? Is that annoying yet? I hope not. I hope it's helpful. I'm going to burnish that down and then I'm going to place my insert right into that pocket. Just like so. Okay. Put that one back over that's our middle signature and then we have our final signature pocket so we're going to cut out those corners again again fold the sides back and then the bottom up give it a good burnish take this on the back side it opens on the right still so we'll place glue on those half inch flaps. 
and we'll stick that down lining up the bottom and the sides before we burnish. And then our insert is going to go right in there. Okay, flip it back over. We have our back signature, our middle signature, and our front signature. Okay, then we have each one of these booklets. Okay, this booklet goes with largest to smallest. Can burnish these. Largest to smallest. All right, then we have our waterfall. So our waterfall, I need to go ahead and burnish all five pages, all five flaps here. It's the third one. We have the fourth one and the fifth one. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stack those up and just make sure that they all are the same height. If they are not, that might mean that you need to do your little bit of trimming, but I think it is close enough for me, so I'm going to move ahead. I'm just going to place that down for a second. We're going to move on to the belly band. You should have a sheet that measures six and a quarter inches in width, and we should have a score, a half inch score at both the top and the bottom. Okay. So I'm going to fold those under and burnish. And then I am going to be starting at one end. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and end up gluing this down. And this is going to be my first waterfall flap. And once I glue it down, I will flip it up. And then I will glue the next one down so that they are adjoining. Okay, and each of them have that half inch flap that has been turned under. So let's get this started. Fold that half inch down, place glue on that half inch hinge, and match the folded edge to the folded edge of my belly band. So we have two sides, doesn't matter which side. I'm just going to start to line this up. And this belly band actually acts as our guide for making sure that it is lined up straight. So then open it up and make sure that you burnish really well. Move on to the next one. Place your adhesive on the back side of that flap. And then line up that folded edge with the edge of the prior flap. And then align your sides really well so that it is straight and you can burnish down. the second one. Open it up, burnish that down. Move on to the third and I'm going to go ahead and speed this up just a little. Now, if you want to keep going with your waterfalls, you could, uh, to fill this up, you could add another three of them, but I am not going to do that um, because I am just using the, four, I'm planning on using the four by sixes that come with this. Now these are, with this collection, now these are uh, the inserts that we're going to have behind our belly band. These measure seven and a half by seven and a half, and there's two of them, so I'm just placing them together so that I don't misplace them. But uh, actually, before I do that, 
our next uh, page is our next cut piece anyhow is the magnetic piece for our belly band <clears throat> and you should have a half inch flap uh, that you fold back and then you glue that on and then I am just going to eyeball this into the center good or you can measure it if you are so inclined that was pretty good okay. this way I can go ahead and place a magnet behind here and on here so let me grab a magnet real quick so I do not forget to do that okay I'm going to grab two magnets here, placing those together, and then I'm going to take off the backing. I'm actually going to place this down here first, make sure that it's centered, um, or will be centered on my little two inch wide flat piece, and then make sure that this is laying flat. And then I will just give it a little rub there so that the adhesive can make itself attached. And what I like to do with my magnet is actually use a little bit of double-sided tape. And I will place a piece of double-sided tape over top of this just to hold it temporarily on there. Once I put my go to put my decorative paper on, I'll remove the backing there and that way it works a little bit better, I think, to keep those magnets on for the time being. So you can see I have a little bit of a, a gap in here and that's because you're going to have some extra bulk with these photos. So you don't want it, you don't want to pull it tight to put your magnet, okay? Uh, you want to have a little bit of a, um, a bow uh, that's just going to allow it to function and lay flat once you get some thickness to it, some bulk to it. Okay, so we are done with that. And now we're going to move on to the very last pocket. This is for the inside um, back cover of our album. And we're going to go ahead and cut out those squares. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and burnish those sides and then the bottom half inch just like that and this will end up going on the inside back portion of our album. So I am not going to place this down yet. I'm going to go ahead and put my decorative paper and then we'll come back and we will assemble everything. Okay, so I have my decorative paper down here in the center and I have my decorative paper down on the back inside cover. So I went ahead and put my pocket on as well. I wanted to make sure that you all knew that I, when I cut my decorative paper, I wanted to do a dry fit around this um, waterfall first. That way I would know whether or not it would be able to lay flat. Um, so I had trimmed my uh, pa decorative paper underneath this waterfall down by just two little slivers here. That was enough to allow it to lay flat. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on. Um, I'm having mine be centered from side to side. So just kind of eyeballing it there. Good enough. Good enough. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and place glue on the back side here of this flap. Before I flip it down. Okay. And then I'm going to place glue on this side of the flap as 
as well. It's just like so. Okay. Now that I have that on, I'll be able to glue this down to the inside of my front cover like this. So let me place some glue around here. Make sure we have this right side up and center it top to bottom, left to right. And I want to get a good stick, so I'm going to go ahead and do some burnishing as well. Okay, so now we have this. That's down really well. So we have that. And now we're going to go ahead and place our hinge system on here. So remember, I want to be able to place this towards the bottom, about an eighth of an inch up from the bottom decorative paper. I'm just going to open this up flat so I can see about how wide on either side I want to try to center it. So I'm only going to place adhesive on those middle two sections because that's what I want to actually stick down. And the other sides are the hinge, so I'm not going to place adhesives on these two. Okay, come down from the top, from the bottom. Okay, and just center it really well. And then go ahead and burnish. Let that glue stick to that paper really well. And then make sure your flaps come up, your hinges come up so that they're not sticking, getting glued down by any excess glue. Nice. And those can flap really well. So I'm going to work this middle section as well. I want to make sure that it's stuck on either side of that flap. I'm using my burnishing tool to really push down on both sides of that. Okay. There we go. Now I have the three flaps and they're all different sizes. So I'm going to start from the back. I, I usually always start from the back and what I do is line this up. Let me remove the insert so it doesn't get in the way. I'm going to line this up uh, just below, just a hair below the bottom of my hinge. And I'm making sure that I feel like the bottom is flat. You can see what I'm doing is allowing for some space at the top. And then we're going to place some glue here. We're going to place glue along this edge. And then fold this down. And then place glue here. Okay. So I'm going to hold this in place, I'm going to fold this back, and I'm going to place glue on the edge, the inside edge of my page. Okay. And then I'm also going to place it on my hinge. And then I'm going to fold my hinge down, just like that, and let me burnish. like that. Okay. Now I'm going to place glue on the hinge itself, just about in the middle, and at the bottom. This is going to close up that page and make it into a pocket. Okay, so we're going to burnish this closed, and then all along the hinge. Now if you wanted uh, some type of opening at the top of your at the top of your pocket page, then it is the time to do it before you glue that shut. 
unless you want it on both and then you can maybe punch through both but now I have the page on there I can put my insert back um, yeah actually these are the inserts for the top pocket page okay all right and I'm gonna go ahead and do the next two but before I do that I want to show you the flaps so remember we had the flaps and I said that I want to offset my flaps from my page itself I want about a half inch sticking over so what I did is I went ahead and cut my decorative paper down to size and for me I just cut it a quarter inch smaller both uh, the horizontal and vertical direction and then what I did is I took my uh, groupings of flaps and I laid it down on top of the decorative paper and I eyeballed about a half inch so it would hang over the page about a half inch and made sure it was uh, even with the bottom of the decorative paper. Once I did that, I held this down, I took my pencil, and I traced along the side of the flaps, the grouping of flaps, all the way up to the very top of where those flaps would be. Okay, I put a mark, and then once I put the mark, just like so, Okay, just like that. Then I used my straight edge to go ahead and cut that a slit out. Very, very thin slit, just like that. From the bottom, it'll be from the bottom. This will allow me to slide that hinge in between, tuck it under. Okay, so make sure it goes all the way up so that you're flush with your decorative paper, the bottom of your decorative paper. So once you do that, then you should be able to glue this down, this flap down, onto the decorative paper, onto the back side of the decorative paper that is. And that will hold those flaps in place. Okay, like that. Now I'm going to place glue on the decorative paper, the back side of that flap, and all around on the decorative paper. Okay, so that I can glue this down onto. onto my signature just like that and this way you don't see the the back side of the flap the hinge from the decorative flap you see how it's hidden it's hidden underneath here there's a very clean look to it and now we have this hanging over the edge of our paper so it's it's, I did the sizing here so it looks like a wave crashing up on the shore, right? Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and speed this along and do the other two. Well, I hope you had fun crafting along and thanks for watching everyone and joining in with me. Uh, don't forget to check out Country Craft Creations for all of your paper crafting needs. And you can check out the Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations Facebook page 
for many, many free tutorials from all the design team members. And there is also a quarterly subscription that's called Seasons of Creativity that you can look into as well. All right, thanks for playing again. And until next time, happy crafting you all. Bye. Thank you.